we're gonna wire our bedroom. Woohoo! I don't know what else to say besides uh, we're gonna wire this thing up and uh, I'll go through a bunch of my tips and tricks along the way of how I like to wire a bedroom, splice, pigtail, layout, you know, you know the deal. Alright, so when I wire a bedroom, I like to use 14.2 Rolmex. It's a good 15 amp circuit. Most bedrooms are gonna be a 15 amp circuit. It's gonna require 14 gauge wire, which is what I got here. 100 foot roll. I usually buy 250s, 250 foot rolls, but it's the end of the job as far as wiring goes, and no sense in just throwing money on the shelf. So then I'll throw it on my water spool or my bobber, which I love. Oh no, we got a problem. So <laughs> they don't fit. The 100 foot rolls don't fit, I guess. Oh, a gun. I never buy a 100 foot roll, but the one time I buy it, I gotta open it up. So this is how I open it up. I just kind of coil this stuff out of here. And, uh, come on. <sighs> Damn it, Bob. All right. Tell I'm nervous, just doing a real candid day in the life video. It's not my normal repertoire. But, uh, I'm sick of structured videos. I think that they're boring in their own right. They're boring for me to make. I like people learning things, but I also like when people get to know me and I don't feel like I can be myself when it's a structured, like, here are the five ways that you can do something. It's just like, <clears throat> how about just watch me do shit and together you can learn stuff. I don't know. If this bombs, it bombs. I mean, I'm sure that subscribers will be fine with it, but YouTube's probably gonna be like, dude, you should, you should go to editing school or learn how to write a script because this on the fly shit's not gonna fly. But it is today, so there, I made it bigger. It fits now. And then it's on there. And I like this wire spooler. I guess I could have been that jackass that just kicks the wire across the floor, but it's so annoying. I like using a wire spooler, so. Now it spins nice and easy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna... This is already challenging. <laughs> I'm not in the camera. What a pain in the ass this is. All right, step back, Bob. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I wanna find a dead end. I wanna pick up a spot on the job. <sighs> Maybe I gotta just stop and talk. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a dead end on the job. And what that means is electric is like a, it's like a river and it runs deep and uh, no, it's electrifying. That's what it is. And, but it has a start and it has an end point and it starts at the panel and it's gonna end somewhere. It does not loop. It's not like plumbing or something like that where it has to loop back or I don't even, plumbing doesn't even loop back. What loops back? Anyway, it doesn't matter what loops back. It's what stops and end, starts and ends. So I'm gonna pick an outlet. Typically, it's gonna make sense. In this case, there's an outlet on this random wall and I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna go outlet to outlet to outlet to switch and make sure that everything is fed. That's like the biggest thing. Make sure that you start in one spot and you work your way all the way around and you wire everything in one day in that area. And don't get distracted because if you miss something, you're not gonna find out until you stick an outlet tester in and it doesn't work. And that's a really shitty day for a lot of people. So I get it. So start and finish an area in the same day and double check, triple check your work to make sure that everything is in the right spot.
when you're drilling your holes, you want to make sure that you drill. Here, look at this. Okay. See that hole? You want to make sure that you're at least an inch and a half to two inches above the bottom here so that no drywall screws go through your uh, wires. And then try to keep your holes close to a stud so that you don't have this big janky thing swinging through the wall. You can just run it and then staple it to the wall. I don't have a lot of holes to drill because when I built the soffits, I made them so that everything's two by six as far as the face of it, but the actual supports are all two by four so that I had my gap so I could just, so I only have to drill holes really where I come in and out of the wall, which is great for me. So I like to go to my, to my outlets first and then from my outlet up to the switch. Some guys, they like to bring a lot of power uh, feeds into the switch. I don't like to do that because it just takes up a ton of room for splicing and crap like that. I prefer hit the outlets first and then feed from the outlets with a single feed to your uh, switch. Yeah, that's right. This is a TV outlet. It's getting hot out. I sweat a lot on these jobs when it gets so warm out. Anyway, this is a TV outlet. My biggest pet peeve is when electricians of any kind, of any, any creed really, uh, run more than one wire into that sucker. Because if it needs to get moved, the last thing I want to jerk around with is more than one wire. So always when running TV outlets, microwaves, uh, even refrigerators, like just have one wire in there. There's no reason to be a hero and have some splice, especially if like, what if you had a problem and you got this big splice behind a TV and then you got to take the TV down. It's just a nightmare. So one wire to the TV outlet, please. This particular situation is I kind of line it up with where my holes are so that it kind of looks like it all flows together. Now you might say, hold on, one second, you might say why would you do that? And I say because it looks good, but also the insulators will help, will, will definitely thank you later if you do it that way. If you, uh, if you decide that you're going to make it look clean in the wall and have everything run across in one even plane. I'm telling you right now, the, uh, the, insul the insulators are going to really thank you for that because then they can pre kind of pull all their insulation and slip it behind the wall if you got everything on like a tidal wave and it looks all janky one you look like an idiot you're probably not gonna get much respect on a job site two you look like an idiot so not everything has a final destination uh, as far as an outlet box at this time yet and the reason I say that is there's blocking here. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Oh yeah, that's nice blocking. So the blocking is here for some cabinets that are going to be kind of, they're going to be floating. And um, we want those outlets to be very centered, you know, right on point. And so we'll use a, uh, you know, an old work box or um, gem box or remodeling box, whatever area of the country you're in and whatever you call it. 
Uh, we'll come back later and do those so that that outlet is perfect. So right now we're just going to run a wire and have it on a nice loop. There's, there's two of these, you know, one on each side. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just running to the socket. But remember what I said. Actually, I didn't say this, but I'm going to say it now. Uh, just like those TV outlets, when it comes to these kind of whips and stuff, don't have two whips sticking out of the wall. That's a nightmare. It's a horrible thing to deal with. Just have one whip per nightstand or whatever. And what we're going to do is we're going to run them back to this outlet that I had deemed the dead end is also going to feed both those nightstands. Again, we're looking for manageability. During a trouble shooting situation, we want to be able to um, figure that out quickly. So we want to be able to find that junction without having to move all this crap out of the way of their nightstands or move the TV, you know, get the idea. Also, it's important to put a service loop in your wires. Let me show you. That's a nice service loop. That's so that you've got plenty of wire in case something bad happens, you want to make sure that you got a loop in here. That's all. When it comes to feeding the room with power, it's called a home run. You want to label it HR like that. I like to feed those out of the switch. Some like to feed it out of outlet, whatever. I just like to keep it consistent. So I always try to feed it out of a switch. Same thing as before. This time have a decent amount. Tuck it in the box for now. Make your service loop. Nail it. Nailed it. comes to when it comes to laying out the lights this design has two can lights in this part of the tray ceiling and then two lights on the other side so the foot of the bed is this way windows behind me lights are on the side there now you got the whole perspective of the room but how do we uh, measure these out or how do I like to do it well here's a fast way to do it I pick a number. So in this case, I'm gonna pick 60. Then I'm gonna measure 60 the other way. Now I got these two lines here. I know that center is somewhere in the middle of this short number. Makes math really easy. Wow, look at that, six inches. So center is three. Then I'll double check it, 54, what, 57, and 57, okay, but that's, that's center, that's all fine and dandy. Now, we need to figure out, we've got two lights, so how many spaces do we have? We've got three spaces, 114. 38. Oh yeah, 38 is the number. I don't know how much of a fan of the symmetricalness of that I am. Let me try 32 because then that would be 16 and then that would be the same distance as the soffit away. I think 16 is the number. That's how I draw a light. We're gonna go 30, 32.
That's why I like using two by fours because I can still maintain the support. I mean, this way I don't need it because it's 16, but I like to have at least 16 on center supports the other way. And by using two by fours, if I got a light in the way, then I can just pull the nails, raise it up two inches, and then that gives me enough clearance for the light, but maintains the space. The only thing that hijacks a good design in the ceiling is a smoke detector. Um, plenty of conversations with designers, architects, can you please move that, that thing's in the wrong way, blah, 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 whatever. So try to be mindful when placing your smoke detector, not because you care, but because everybody else seems to care about the location of the smoke detector. In this case, I'm going to do the same 16 inch method and I'm going to try to land it right here on this guy without doing a whole lot of work. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice 16 right there. And then we'll pull a 16 this way. Definitely want to get it two feet away from the door. And if you can, center it in the door. I can't center it in the door because it'll end up right on this tray right here. So we want to make sure we got 16. And then we got 16, so it's good. It's not exactly 16, but it's the same this way as this way, which aesthetically will make a square, and our eyes seem to gravitate towards rectangles and squares. Symmetry is important. Hey guys, and gals, people, hey people. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video today. I certainly enjoyed it. Uh, a little unconventional, a little long, so hopefully you stuck through to the end. But uh, yeah, see you next time.